The little boy from Rosario Santa Fe has just pitched up in heaven. And of course, he is not alone. The 18th of December 2022 was the day that Lionel Messi's career became a movie. But how did he arrive there? Now, making this video has been incredibly eye-opening for me because we wanted to make a video that celebrated the day that Lionel Messi's career turned into a movie. But what happened was that we realized that the brilliance of Messi isn't just about him, it's, it's about the footballing world's relationship with Lionel Messi. And that led us to asking ourselves a question that I've never thought of and one that I, yeah, I didn't really like the answer to. It's a homage to ourselves. We watched the whole series. I mean, the, the ending has to be good, isn't it? Argentina finished their qualification campaign with an undefeated record of 11 wins and six draws and finished second only to Brazil. Now, Messi was Argentina's joint top goal scorer with seven goals in 17 matches, but their final qualification match wasn't about Messi. It was about Julian Alvarez, who scored Argentina's goal in their one-all draw against Ecuador. That meant that they kept their unbeaten record alive, but now's not the time to talk about Julian Alvarez just yet. 1st of April 2022, 261 days to go. Location, Doha Exhibition and Convention Center. This was the day that Argentina's fate would be decided and the first monumental day of the story. Argentina get placed in Group C, containing Poland, Mexico and Saudi Arabia. Argentina and Lionel Messi's odds of winning the World Cup, they then shorten to 9-1. to one. However, still higher than Spain, 8-1, to one. England, 13-2, to two. France, 11-2 to two. and of course, the only better team in qualification, Brazil at 9-2. Other odds were available. The tournament begins and the most important month of Messi's career, it is here, the month of reckoning. Argentina versus Saudi Arabia. Argentina start off their campaign against the bottom seeded team in their group and a team that they had never, ever lost to. What could go wrong? One number had been following Lionel Messi and his teammates around in the build-up. 36, 36, 36, 36. The number of matches Argentina were undefeated for in the build-up to their World Cup opener against Saudi Arabia. A tense-looking Lionel Messi warms up in front of a sea of green shirts who have made that short journey to Doha. And they had absolutely no idea what they were about to see. The match kicks off and within 1 minute and 36 seconds Lionel Messi latches onto a loose ball and everybody watching in the stadium alongside the millions watching in expectation realise who the ball will fall to. Him. The maestro. The first time I heard of him was when he trained with the first team of Barcelona as a 17 year old. Ronaldinho said on that first training session to everyone who, who wanted to hear it, he's going to be better than me. The collective gasp from around the world occurs as Messi strides towards the ball. Colatara Martinez, there's Messi, first save. What could have been a confidence-shaking miss for, not Messi, but for every Argentinian on the pitch and in the ground, doesn't actually come to be. They continue to push and they get their wish. A tenth minute penalty, Messi scores, normal service resumed. 36 is on its way to becoming 37, right? Well, three people in particular, they have different plans for how they want Messi's legacy to be remembered. The second half arrives and the entire country of Argentina sink into their chairs and the collective hearts of Lionel Messi lovers around the world, well, they skip a beat as Saudi Arabia score a goal through Saleh al Shiri. And before the Doha dust has settled, Saudi Arabia go into a 2-1 lead. The world is in shock all within the space of five minutes through Salem al Dosori, Combined with the performance in goal from Mohamed al Owais, making save after save and the match finishing in a 2-1 victory for Saudi Arabia, we begin to wonder, was this World Cup just another messy World Cup script of promise, hype and hope, but anti-climax and woe? And have these three Saudi Arabians just ruined Lionel Messi's last ever chance to win a World Cup? The fallout left us with the greatest shock in World Cup history and a question wrapped up in a meme that spread across the internet like wildfire from TikTok to Twitter. Excuse me, what is missing? missing? Argentina need to fix it and they need to fix it quick or they will have let down their greatest ever player in what is a now or never tournament. But since 2005, when Argentina's national team has looked for salvation, they have looked to Messi. It was win or die in the second match. The tension was paralyzing. Lionel was on his own. 
Game two does not get off to a good start. A poor but defensively solid Mexico stand firm for the entirety of the first half, with Argentina only taking one shot in the first 45 minutes. The failures of Russia 2018, Brazil 2014 and South Africa 2010, they start to get relived and the potential outcome feels gut-wrenchingly familiar. Resignation and desperation, they seep into the legs of the players and the stomachs of the thousands of Argentinian fans that dominate the La Salle Stadium. Lionel was on his own, or so he thought. The second half starts slowly. In the 57th minute and the 63rd minute of the game, Lionel Scaloni makes a change that he didn't know at the time. It would change the careers of every player on that pitch that day. Enzo Fernandez and Julian Alvarez enter the fray. But these two players aren't the one thing that no other team in the world had on that day. The one thing that Argentina had to get them out of trouble was Lionel Messi, who got the ball just outside of the D and fired home after Alvarez made a run centrally that opened up the space. Argentina needed Lionel Messi in that moment, but fortunately all Lionel Messi needed was a yard. The belief is back, Argentina are back, and the world stands up to notice the brilliance of Messi. Argentina breathe again. With that belief, Enzo Fernandez announces himself with an assist from who? Lionel Andres Messi. He has arrived. Argentina have stood up. Lionel Messi wasn't alone anymore, but he knew he had to be careful. Poland next and possibly last in Group C. Poland had drawn with Mexico and beaten Saudi Arabia and sat top of the group, but surely Messi was going to do it again, right? That's what we all expected. And when Argentina were awarded a penalty in the 39th minute, there was no doubt. I was in that stadium that day. It was a guarantee that he was going to score. Oh, no! He missed it! Krzyzewski had other ideas though, of course, and the deafening silence in the stadium was only interrupted by those Polish fan celebrations. Pressure builds, expectation is so high at this point. Slip ups like this can't be happening and Messi he was becoming the villain of his own story. And for once, he was in need. He needed help. He needed his teammates. The second half is where things change again with the introduction of Alexis McAllister, who scores a goal in only his seventh cap for Argentina. But Argentina weren't finished, and it was time for two players who had been flirting with starting berths to prove themselves and give the person who would have been their idol growing up what he needed from them most. The two youngsters raised on Lionel Messi, Enzo Fernandez and Julian Alvarez, combined to take the game out of Poland's hands, and now it's their time. They had been important leading up to this moment, but this is where things changed. The experienced Messi now had something that even he couldn't conjure onto the field anymore, the freedom of youth. Argentina win the group, but this is when the journey becomes a lot more treacherous. Safely into the knockouts as the group winners, it was Australia who awaited Argentina in the round of 16, a fixture that Argentina had won five times out of the seven times that they had faced each other. Australian manager Graham Arnold had played in the only draw between these sides in 1993 against a team that featured Diego Maradona and Alexis McAllister's father, Carlos. What Messi had this time round was a group of friends as his teammates. And this is what became the difference in this game. They're all the same. They're all like uh, like kids that are happy to be obviously representing Argentina and they're all very professional. But at the same time, um, they are the closest I've seen for Argentina of a team that has just been picked from the park. A bunch of friends. In moments I will never forget, again, I was fortunate enough to be in the ground when this goal was scored. And McAllister plays a full pass into Nicolas Otamendi who lays it off to Messi, who makes it 1-0. And the belief it is thriving. It is injected into those fans. They are truly starting to believe. Now, the quarterfinal match between the Netherlands and Argentina will broadly be remembered for the dramatic events on the field. But actually, we saw something from Lionel Messi that we'd never seen during his time as a player in Europe. Bueno, Leo, quedaste un poco, un poco caliente por el final. Qué mira, bobo. Qué mira, bobo. Anda, anda para allá, bobo. Anda para allá. Tranquilo, tranquilo, Leo. Bueno. Um... This was a sign of a fire burnt beneath the ever introverted personality that finally felt free to be let out. Something many would see as a weakness, but was in fact a sign of something very, very different. What was like a, a word means idiot. It's a word that he used against the, the Dutch striker. And it's only used by 12 year olds. <laughs> Adults don't use that word. So it's like the 12 the year old Leo has just 
uh, resuscitated in, in, in this 36-year-old Leo. As Guillaume said there, the term bobo, which means fool or idiot, is a slang word used by children in Argentina. And this is where Lionel Messi's upbringing and what the World Cup really means to him comes into play. There are two sides to Lionel Messi, a European side and an Argentine side. Messi had made the move to Spain at a young age, which has meant that there is a duality to the way that he sees the world. On the one hand, we see the reserved, cautious and quite Catalan side in him. But when he plays for Argentina, he reverts to his childhood self. And when he plays for Argentina, he sees the world as an Argentinian. And importantly, he sees it through his childhood perspective, a perspective that was raised on Diego Maradona and a generally successful time for Argentina on the world stage. So emotions are allowed to come into play, something that we rarely see with Lionel Messi. The game against the Netherlands saw a total of 18 yellow cards, the most ever for a World Cup match. But allowing the game to descend into this type of a match was the Netherlands' biggest mistake as it awakened that fiery Argentine identity that Lionel Messi had and he punished them with a pinpoint pass that very, very few could do. Or could anyone do? The pass for Molina's goal then was followed by a penalty that he scored and then he scored another one in the penalty shootout as well. The cunning, streetwise spirit of Diego Maradona found its way into the mind, hands and shuffling hips, of course, of Emi Martinez in the penalty shootout and Argentina made their way through. Lionel Messi was now far from alone and he had the footballing world wondering if the footballing gods were finally on his side. The semi-final is remembered for one thing. Vintage Lionel Messi. We have to talk about this goal. Every time you watch this goal, you see something different. The first is when the ball isn't even played. Now, Messi makes the faintest of hand gestures to Alvarez, indicating for him to move towards the ball and buying Messi the extra half a yard he needs to receive the ball. It is genius, but that's only a fraction of the magic that we see in this moment. All Alvarez needs to do is to find Messi. And this is where the magic of Messi comes into play. Picking up the ball at almost halfway, the same position that becomes synonymous with that famous goal versus Bilbao, as he races away from Vardiol, we all missed one action, an action that was only a tenth of a second long, and that is the little look that he makes over his left shoulder to check where Alvarez is. He's doing this at the same time, of course, whilst dribbling against the defender of the tournament. This is the magic of Messi. Not only does he have a player who was on his way to becoming one of the most expensive defenders of all time chasing him, but he's also playing in a World Cup semi-final. He's also 35. He's also probably a little bit knackered. And he also had the ball. And protecting the ball is what 99.9% .9 of footballers do in that moment. Not Messi though, he's so intelligent that he's able to check where his teammates are even when he's got a million thoughts running through his mind. Messi knows, he always knows and he knows before you as well. This clip summarises the magic of Messi and it is what we will be showing our grandchildren in 50 years time when they ask, what's Lionel Messi like? Why was he so good? Show them this clip the day that the entirety of the footballing world was waiting for. In every final, at least once, he determines where the, goal, where the game goes. Nobody ever in the game has done that. No Maradona, no Pelé, no, nobody. But okay, uh, it will take me longer to convince people that he's the best ever. Uh, if you just play the final. It was the day that was the very last chance for Messi to do what we thought he would have already done by now. The day that had everything riding on it. A movie has three acts. This game was no different. The match would also feature three acts known as the first 90 minutes, extra time, and penalties. Argentina fly out of the blocks and dominate early on. They are once again awarded a penalty, a penalty that any neutral in the world would have given them simply to see Messi fulfill his destiny. 13 minutes later, Julian Alvarez finds McAllister who squares it to Di Maria to score a goal. A goal that encapsulates the very thing that we've danced around throughout this video. The youngsters doing it for their idol and the older players doing it for their friend. But always with a sprinkling of Lionel Messi brilliance. If you watch that goal again, Lionel Messi's move opens it all up. He brings four players towards him and takes them out of the game, which allows the goal to be. One thing we didn't mention about this final movie is that there, there was a villain this entire time. A villain who most possibly believes that it was his destiny to win the tournament and take away the title that has been thrusted in Messi's direction for years. The greatest of all time. But that's a title that has always been caveated by the lack of a World Cup. 12 minutes to go. 
12 minutes until Messi fulfills his destiny. Otamendi, the player who had assisted Messi against Australia, gives away a penalty. Now, Mbappe enters the game with a goal from the spot. Less than two minutes later, he does the unthinkable. He scores a venomous volley, and the first plot twist of this movie reveals itself. The game goes to extra time. Extra time looms, the stadium is on a knife edge. The football played highlights this too. That is until the 107th minute in which Lautaro Martinez, a player who had been demonised for his missed chances earlier on in the tournament, he breaks free and he fires at Lloris, who spills it. And the player he spills it to was never going to miss, Lionel Messi. This was it. This was the moment for him. But in hindsight, it's not a well-remembered moment for this next reason. But you know what happened. Handball, penalty to France, and Mbappe scores his hat-trick in the World Cup final. Was this story actually about him this whole time? Was the Lionel Messi movie just a subplot for the Kylian Mbappe series? Penalties would give us the answer. Well, that's what we thought until Kolo Mwani broke free in the 123rd minute, one-on-one. -on -one. There would be no coming back from this, surely. If he scored, it was over. His shot was met by an Emmy Martinez starfish save that sealed the second act. Penalties, the least skill-based aspect of football, a lottery that is purely based on fate. Whose fate was this though? Lionel Messi steps up, he scores. Mbappe steps up, scores too. There was no separating them. But this time it wasn't about Argentina having something that nobody else had. It was about Messi having something that nobody else had teammates that would die for him and the entire football world speaking his success into existence. Komen steps up for France, Martinez saves it, Montiel steps up for Argentina to win it. player of our generation isn't he? He's the player of every generation and he's still playing and we don't know a world without Lionel Messi. Messi will be remembered forever but in this tournament he was dancing with mortality because we knew his World Cup was a time-bound task. Everybody wanted him to do it and now because he's won it he is immortal. But what happens once it's over? The orphans will be orphans. Because after Messi, we'll be looking for Messi's. But you have to. I mean, you know, it's feel that it's, it, it will it will make such a hole in our uh, mind. We, we've been used to in 17 years for somebody to be ahead of the game. Who would you do that for these days? We do believe in 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 in, in romantic endings after that. I did a whole podcast with Guillaume Balaguer, who of course you saw in this video. He's the only authorised author of the biography of Lionel Messi. It is updated. It's a great book. There's a link to that in the description. There's also a link to our podcast together. So if you want to go and enjoy that entire podcast, which is on the ripple effect, click on the link in the description below. Enjoy!